Today we're going to be talking about four demonic pastors. The first one we're going to be covering is Rick Warren. Rick Warren. Oh, man. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2, please. And then also Matthew chapter 24. 2 Peter chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 24. The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in the last days, we are to be aware of Satan, what he's doing in our world, so that we don't be ignorant of his system and fall prey into it. Now the Bible specifically says that there's going to be false prophets in the last days. And more specifically, there's going to be the false prophet in the tribulation. Now, the false prophet has always been a figure that interested me more than the Antichrist. Uh, one day I will, Lord willing, do a teaching like my other teachings I put on a shelf. But I want to touch on the Antichrist a little more one day. Maybe do a one-hour special study just on the false prophet one day. But the false prophet is a very interesting figure. But how we can get a clue of what the false prophet is is looking at what the Bible says concerning about false prophets. And we compare it with today's day and age and see if those false prophets match up. Then we can get an idea more and more of who the false prophet will be like. So let's start off with 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But there were what? False prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. So notice shall be. It's like a future time period. Who privately shall bring in what? Damnable heresies. Now, isn't it interesting that it says what? Privately, right? Did it say publicly or privately? Privately. So, one of the signs of a false prophet is that they're going to be privy. They're not going to be, they're not going to mention clearly what their doctrines are. Okay? Keep that in mind shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So another thing is that they're going to deny the Lord. They're going to deny God. Hmm. Notice in verse 2, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. So notice this says many, right? So they're going to have many followers. Many will listen to them. Oh, your church is small. Well, praise the Lord. That, that shows how I'm not, I'm not part of this punch right here. If I have a humongous church with so many people, then I'm going to be scared even of myself. <laughs> we're, also, we're also going to look at uh, verse 2 again. Verse 2. You're okay, brother. <laughs> You're, you'll be okay over there. All right. By reason, by reason of whom... The way of truth shall be what? Evil spoken of. So notice that the truth is going to be evil spoken of. They're going to talk negatively about that. They don't like the truth. Now already you're like going ding, 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 ding on all four right here with RW right here. You can see that RW fit all four so far. Now let's read right here. And through covetousness shall they with what? Feigned words. Look at that. So they're very smooth in words. They're very good in their words. Make what? Merchandise of you. Ah, so then they get money off of that too. Cha-ching, cha-ching, and cha-ching. Yeah, might as well say 666 out of this. Anyways, whose judgment now of a what? Long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So notice that the Bible says that these preachers are going to arise. And these false preachers, the Bible says that they will be judged. Look at verse 18. For when they speak, what? Great swelling words of vanity. See that again? Cha-ching, cha-ching. They allure through the lust of the flesh. Ah, so this one is going to please what? Your flesh. See, this, this fits with everybody right here, these four demonic pastors. 
They allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in our error. While they promise them liber liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same, is he brought in bondage. So notice right here that the Bible says that these are the signs of a false prophet. Doesn't Rick Warren match up with that one? Yeah, he definitely matches up with that one. The way he talks. You don't get inside the White House and then you give a prayer at the Oval Office, at, at the inauguration of Obama. You don't get that kind of chance unless you're good with words. Amen. If you said everything, if you weren't privy, but you exposed everything, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And not only that, if you didn't talk down on Christians who expose the truth, you would not get that chance to pray over the inauguration ceremony of Obama. You think they're going to ask me to pray over him? No, they're not. They're, gonna, they're not going to even give me a call. They're not going to ask me to do it. Why? Because they know what I teach and preach. But Rick Warren, they know what he teaches and preaches. That's why they'll still let him in. That should tell volumes right there. Hmm. All right. Anyways, concerning Rick Warren, here are some of the things that you'll probably get a blessing from, all right? You, your flesh will feel so great just hearing some of his quotes right here. So this is what uh, Rick Warren says in his book. So it's called the, his best-selling book. What is it? The Purpose Driven Life, right? All right. So here are some ways that you'll feel so great about. <laughs> you are a bundle of incredible abilities, an amazing creation of God. Part of the church's responsibility is to identify and release your abilities for serving God. Okay, that's, okay, that's true, but you're, you notice how it's kind of making you feel a little yeah, right? But you notice right here, the, the important thing is that how it pleases who? You. You. All right, let's uh, keep reading right here. You only bring God, okay, God, you only bring him enjoyment. How do you bring God enjoyment? You only bring him enjoyment by being you. Anytime you reject any part of yourself, you are rejecting God's wisdom and sovereignty in creating you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, we're going to come to that verse later on, on who denied himself. What did Jesus Christ say? Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. If you don't deny yourself, who are you denying? All right. Anyways. Okay. This, this, okay, this is creepy. When you are sleeping, God gazes at you with love because you were his idea. He loves you as if you were the only person on earth. I can't sleep at night now. It's just freaking me out. Here's another quote. <clears throat> if you want to know how much you matter to God, look at Christ with his arms outstretched on the cross saying, I love you this much. I'd rather die than live without you. Now look, uh, God li lived for all eternity. So, I mean, that's how long he lived, for eternity. So, as God has lived for eternity... And how long for eternity without mankind? He can do that. He does not have to create us, but he did it out of love and grace. Hey, he could start a new group of people. Didn't you know that? Like he did at Noah's flood. But look at Romans chapter 7 now. Romans chapter 7. Now you notice that a lot of it is true. A lot of it is true, but you see that's what false prophets are. What false prophets are is that they give truth. But then over behind the scenes, there's an element of a lie. But not only that, how, how much of this matches up with this, right? It's pleasing who? It's pleasing flesh. So even though it's true, it nevertheless pleases which member of your body? It's your flesh. That's why they'll allow him in. But have him preach on hell, sin, and judgment. And when was the last time Rick Warren preached on that? Okay, that's a problem. Look at Romans chapter 7, verse 18. You are a bundle of love. Don't reject yourself. And Okay, verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth what? 
No good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I, uh, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Look at that. Oh, don't think of yourself to be a, uh, don't despise yourself, don't reject yourself. Verse 24, say this to Rick Warren. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? What would Rick Warren respond? Oh, no, 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 no. You are a bundle of love. When you are sleeping at night, God gazes at you with love. Oh, 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 okay. No. You know who I hate more than the devil? I hate myself. That will preach right there. That should preach at you. You know who I hate more than, de than the devil? Is myself. Because this wicked being, this flesh, just keeps sinning against God, letting him down. That's why I hate this flesh. You, this got to be your worst enemy more than the devil. That will preach right there. Yeah, I just lost subscribers after that one. I kicked your favorite pastor right there. All right, another person right here. The second satanic pastor, Joel Osteen. Oh, oh. Joel Osteen, right? Let, what happened to your smiles? You're all frowning now. You're all frowning after I mentioned his name. Yeah, what happened to all your smiles now? You started frowning. Joel Osteen. Uh, what's his uh, favorite book? Your Best Life Now, right? Look, you got to realize this. If you think that, okay, but he's being doctrinally correct and all that, then how do you get involved in an interview with Oprah? Right. Come on. Why would Oprah recommend your book? Unless it pleased who? The flesh. And if you're being privy and with good words, see? Oh, yeah. Nice words, nice words. And you get many followers. See that? That ought to open up your eyes, folks. That ought to open up your eyes. So you got to realize right here that this is a problem. Joel Osteen is definitely a second demonic pastor sent from hell itself. Amen. Oh, he's such a nice guy. Yeah, I bet you Judas Iscariot smiled like that too and fooled all the disciples. I bet you he fooled the disciples like that too. Now, you got to understand this about Joel Osteen is that he, I'm going to read some of his quotes here in his uh, book from Joel Osteen. So here's one of his works right here. Perhaps you work in sales and you are scheduled to give an important presentation. You're really hoping to snag that big contract. Don't be surprised if you hear a voice whispering in your mind, you don't have a chance. This is going to be a lousy day for you. Nothing good ever happens to you. You might as well not even get your hopes up. That way, when you don't get that great contract, you won't be too disappointed. Don't listen to such lies. God wants you to get your hopes up. We should get up in the morning confidently expecting the favor of God. Start expecting doors of opportunity to open for you. Expect to excel in your career. Expect to rise above life's challenges. Now, think about this. This all sounds, what, nice. And it's not like you can find something evil out of it. And there's a lot of it that is true. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ. But you see what his word is giving out right here? His word is giving out right here, you will get the contract. You will get the contract. Don't ever think about disappointment. You are going to even excel after that. Well, what, if you, what will happen if you thought positively that you're going to receive it and you actually didn't? Because God had a different plan in mind. Not only that, maybe that contract is going to be your downfall. It's going to cause you to further sin. So it is best that you didn't get the contract to begin with. The problem with people is that they feel like, oh, I can do it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Well, okay. Look at Isaiah 14. The power of I can, right? That's Joel Osteen's, one of his writings. The power of I can. Yeah, okay then. Yeah, let's see who said that. Okay, let's see who said that. Look at Isaiah 14. That's a sign of the devil. No, that's not the sign of the... Yeah, it's a sign of the devil. Because look who said that. Look at Isaiah 14. He had a positive thinking. The power of positive thinking. Satan was a great being of positive thinking. 
Look at verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Joel Osteen says, you're going to excel in getting the contract. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit up also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be the, like the Most High. I'll tell you who read Joel Osteen's book. That was Lucifer. He read that. He, had, he, he loved that book. He has a special hand of blessing on that book. Now, am I against... Am I against... Rick Warren about saying that, you know, we should feel de overly depressed with ourselves and hate us and, oh, I hate that I'm created, I'm made, and, oh, I'm so ugly, I don't like myself. No, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, amen. The Bible says also that we have to think positively, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. But you see right here what they're doing, they're only focusing on that. And when they're only focusing on that, they don't tell their people that, hey, you're going to go through, there's going to be things in life that you're not going to get. That is not of the will of God. And if you're not serving God according to his will, don't expect that you're going to get that. They don't talk about sin and judgment. Yes, we should appreciate how God created us, but that doesn't mean that we can embrace our homosexual side to it, our sinful side to it. Don't you think some homosexual is going to take that book and say, yes, I love God, I am fearfully and wonderfully made? No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? You don't? I bet you one of their books, a homosexual is reading that and has it in his or her bookshelf. Don't take chances now. Another thing right here, the third devil. Shall we talk about the third devil? Well, before we talk about the third devil, let's talk about Joel Osteen. See, he's being privy, privy, privy. So then if you look at his interview with Larry King, how many of you have seen that before, right? His interview with Larry King. What did he do? Man, this guy, this guy is something else. So here's one example when he's been uh, asked this question. So Larry King asked, we've had ministers on who said your record don't count. You either believe in Christ or you don't. Yeah, amen. amen. If you believe in Christ, you are, you are going to heaven. And if you don't, no matter what you've done in your life, you ain't. Yeah, that in or out, right? Amen. That's what we believe in. But look at this privy thing, this privy thing. Yeah, I don't know. That's Osteen's response. Wait, what? Yeah, I don't know. There's probably a balance between. No, you don't. No, there isn't. You believe on Christ or you don't. I believe you have to know Christ, but I think that if you know Christ, if you're a believer in God, you're going to have some good works. And oh, oh, now, now he's saying right here that it is something that you do that counts. I think it's a cop out to say I'm a Christian, but I don't ever do anything. And King, he interrupts because he's catching this guy. See, he's being privy. See, he's being cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. He's getting many followers, see? He's saying things that are pleasing the flesh. He's got nice words. King said, no, in or out. Let me get a clear point. King interrupts, what if you're Jewish or Muslim? You don't accept Christ at all. Osteen responds, you know, I'm very careful about saying who would and wouldn't go to heaven. I don't know. <laughs> then King asks again, if you believe you have to believe in Christ, they're wrong, aren't they? Yes. Osteen says, well, I don't know if they believe they're wrong. I believe, here's what the Bible teaches, and from the Christian faith, this is what I believe, but I just think that only God will judge a person's heart. I spent a lot of time in India with my father. I don't know all about their religion, but I know they love God. And I don't know. I've seen their sincerity. So I don't know. I know for me and what the Bible teaches, I want to have a relationship with Jesus. Look at this guy. Look, look at this guy, man. See, words, words, words. He's trying to dance around the issue, private. Okay, uh, so the thing is, is that the caller asked Larry, hello, Larry, you're the best, and thank you, Joel, uh, and thank you, Joel, for your positive messages in your book. I'm wondering, though, 
why do you sidestep Larry's earlier question about how we get to heaven? <laughs> the Bible clearly tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, and the only way to the Father is through Him. That's not really a message of condemnation, but of truth. See, they, 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 they don't like Bible thumpers. They speak evil of it. That's just truth, not condemnation. Now, you know what he says after that? Yes, I, I, I would agree with her. I believe that. So it's a woman who called. A woman who called and said, this is right, this is wrong. And Joel Osteen, who doesn't have enough testosterone in him, he's got so much more estrogen than that female caller. He's like, well, I, I don't know. I, like that. Yes, I would agree with her. I believe that. And then King interrupts. So then a Jew is not going to have it. <laughs> Osteen says, no, here's my thing, Larry, is I can't judge somebody's heart, you know. Only God can look at somebody's heart. And so I don't know. To me, it's not my business to say, you know, this one is or this one isn't. I just say, here's what the Bible teaches, and I'm going to put my faith in Christ. And I just think it's wrong when you go around saying, you're saying, you're not going, you're not going, you're not going, because it's not exactly my way. I'm just, and King asks him, but you believe your way. And then Osteen says, I believe my way. I believe my way with all my heart. King asks, but for someone who doesn't share it is wrong, isn't he? Osteen says, well, yes. Well, I don't know if I look at it like that. I would present my way, but I'm just going to let God be the judge of that. I don't know. I don't know. You see this repetition? He's like repeating himself. I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think, I think. What about, King asks this, what about the atheists? You know what Osteen says? You know what? I'm going to let someone, I'm going to let God be the judge of who goes to heaven and hell. I just, again, I present the truth and I say it every week. You know, I believe it's a relationship with Jesus and la, 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 la. See, see this? See this? That's why when he was, he got so much hot water on that when he was on the Pierce Morgan show, he got more clear after that. If you listen to that. You know why? He got so much hot water. You know why? That's his, how he was raised and grown up with. By the way, these two preachers met the Pope. All right? These two met the Pope. Okay. Uh, of course, there's nothing wrong with these guys. All right. The third devil. The third devil. I don't, I don't know what's going on with this gentleman right here. But he used to be very famous, and his church is called Crystal Cathedral. His name is Robert Schuller. Robert Schuller. This is a third devil right here. This guy, I mean, he is so much into positive, positive, positive thinking. I kid you not. I'm going to give you some of his quotes right here, and you're going to see that this is like really blasphemous from Robert Schuller. So he had a very huge church, Crystal Cathedral. Guess what it's sold to now? You want to guess? To the Catholics. Wow. See, it's always the Catholic. There's always some Catholic behind it right there. This is what Robert Schuller says about born again, okay? You know how to be born again? To be born again means that we must be changed from a negative to a positive self-image. From inferiority to self-esteem. From fear to love. From doubt to trust. A person... A person is in hell when he has lost his self-esteem. Wow. Can you imagine any condition more tragic than to live life and eternity in shame? Uh, sir, you have to realize you're a sinner, a repentant sinner. You got to loathe yourself and put your trust on Jesus Christ, not on yourself. Amen. What in the world, man? This, this guy needs a brain check. This guy, this guy needs a brain check. These guys are something else. Here's another one. Sin is any act or thought that robs myself or another human being of his or her self-esteem. Oh, wow. So what I'm doing is sinning right now, see? According to them. Jesus never called a person a sinner. What? Wait, 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 wait. wait, what? No, no, shut up. At that point, just shut up, please. Okay? What in the world? Didn't Jesus Christ said, I came not to call the righteous, but who? Sinners to repentance. What in the world, man? Okay. 
Rather, he deserved his righteous rebuke for those who use their religious authority to generate guilt and cause people to lose their ability to taste and enjoy their right to dignity. I don't think anything has been done in the name of Christ and under the banner of Christianity that has proven more destructive to human personality and hence counterproductive to the evangelism enterprise than the often crude, uncouth, and unchristian strategy of attempting to make people aware of their lost and sinful condition. <laughs> Thinking truth evil. Look at this guy. This is, this is, a, this is if you want to see a devil, you've never seen anyone but Robert Schuller. And yes, he smiles too. Every devil smiles. Every devil smiles, man. These guys are something else. All right, now the fourth devil.